Welcome to this mini series on blocks in Rome research as part of the magical academic note taking course. We are on part four. If you haven't seen the first three parts, go back and watch them. The first part is about um, what makes Rome research blocks unique. The second part talks about the differences between blocks and pages. Part three is about block connections. And this part, part four, is all about block types. So what are block types and why do we need them? Well, as you know, magical academic note taking is based very much around developing processes. So I want everything that I write inside Rome to serve a specific purpose. Um, I need them to serve a specific purpose so that when I'm writing processes, I know how to use the different block types. So just as we did for classifying page types, in order to develop processes easily, it's helpful for me to categorize different blocks under block types. So what do block types do? Well, they answer three really important questions. The first question they ask is what will this block type be used for? So will I, what kind of process will this block type be effective in? Um, when do I need to pay attention to these block types? How will I use this specific type of block? The next question again is when do I want to see this block type not the individual block, when would I like to see this block type again? And again, that impacts how we build the processes. And the third question I want to ask is how am I going to identify this block type? So let's talk about general block types. Again, I'm showing you my block types. I'm showing the way to categorize blocks that works for me within all of my different processes that I carry out across my Rome graph, which by the way, I use for academic writing, I use for creative writing, I use for running my business, I use for life management, et cetera, et cetera. So I have many, many uses um, for block types that perhaps you do not. So again, I'm giving you examples. If you want to take them and use them as is, that's perfectly fine. However, you may need to define some of your own block types based on what you are doing inside your own Rome research graph. So let's talk about general blocks. These uh, blocks are part of the general ultimate life management process that I run within my Rome graph. Beginning with what I would call a life note. Um, a life note is a note about progress, thoughts, or daily activities, etc. When do I want to see these kinds of notes again? I want to see these notes when I go back to review my progress on a project, to analyze the effectiveness of my day, or to look back at my thoughts, etc., etc. So how do I identify these block types? I don't need to. These block types sit pretty exclusively on the daily note page. I use my daily note page as the entryway to Rome. So anything I am doing that really is a life note sits squarely on a daily note page. Anything on there, I pretty much know it's classified as a life note. The next kind of block type is a task block. Um, you can substitute note or block. We do that frequently throughout the course just so that you don't get confused um, as we talk about note taking and then also blocks. So there's, they're um, interchangeable. So what is a task note? A task note is a block that contains a specific task. When do I want to see these notes again? I want to see these notes when it is time to actually complete that task. So how do I identify these notes? Um, all of my task notes get funneled through the task management process, beginning with the tag of inbox. And I'll make you a video that shows you exactly how that's done. Then I also have project notes. So what are project notes? Project notes are notes that contribute to a project. Primarily, um, they are an idea for content 
or they are actually the content of the project itself. When do I want to see these notes? I want to see them when I am working on that specific project. So how do I make sure that these note types appear when I need them? How do I identify them? No matter where these notes are taken, they're always either nested under the product, product, project page name or added directly to the project page. Then I have library notes. What are library notes? These blocks contain content that I want to explore further. So it may be a block relevant to a specific project, or it may just be a note I took about something that interests me. When do I want to see these blocks again? Um, I want to see them when I'm working on nurturing my Cabrelli garden, um, which is my content creation process, or when I am working on a specific project. So how do I identify these notes? These notes are automatically categorized through their linkage to collection tags or their linkage to projects. What you'll see with me making the effort to classify these types of notes is that every time I put a piece of content into Roam, I have to pause and just think for a second about why I'm putting it in there and when I want to see it again. This means that I don't waste time on information that really isn't important and isn't going to contribute to the work I do inside of Rome. And it also means that a note never gets lost. Um, everything is set up to time travel and magically resurface when I need it the next time. Now, if you are watching this video on YouTube, this is where we end because the smart notes blocks are the blocks that I use within my um, smart note uh, process, which is um, a part of the magical academic note taking course and is reserved for magical academic note taking students. If you are a magical academic note taking student, stay, stay tuned. This video is coming next. Onwards and upwards.